Welcome to the HPG Blackout. Whether you love or hate Devlin Stone does not matter to me because this amateur historian loves big, stompy robots. Today we explore the Dark Age. But since Comstar still has us in a blackout, we need your help to get our signal out by liking this video and subscribing to the channel for more content just like this. In the aftermath of the word of Blake War, Devlin Stone established the Republic of the Sphere as a unifying entity, using strategies to rally different factions' support. Founded on May 1st, 3085, with the Treaty of Tikhonov, the Republic aimed for lasting peace. Stone implemented the Controversial Resettlement Act to eradicate prejudice through desegregation based on Republic citizenship, leading to riots and opposition, which prompted Stone to make resettlement voluntary in 3095. Furthermore, Stone initiated the Military Material Redemption Program, encouraging citizens to surrender battle mechs, reshaping the Inner Sphere's military, and promoting peace and unity despite the opposition. From 3089 to 3093, Black Dragon dissenters' failed coup against Hohairo Kurita led to a conflict with the Republic, violating the Ares Conventions. Joint forces from the DCMS and RAF eradicated the dissenters. In 3097, after a supply price surge, Clan Wolf's Khan Ivan Kerensky initiated a trial of reaving, leading to the Kittredge Compromise, the Great Reaving, and heavy losses in the Inner Sphere clans. The Second Combined Dominion War, marked by the murder of Nova Cat Khan Santine West, involved the Nova Cats, Draconis Combine, and Ghost Bear Dominion. Rising tensions between the Republic and the Capellans culminated in the Federated Sons attacking the Confederation, prompting Project Ardwolf and Taipan, leading to the Fortress Republic Protocol. The Capellan Crusades began in 3111, highlighted by the massacre of Liel and strategic blunders. The Victoria War was initiated by Duchess Amanda Hasek, aiming for respect and autonomy but underestimated the Capellan Confederation. In August 3130, Devlin Stone, a key figure in the Republic of the Sphere, retired and handed over power to Damian Redburn, sparking numerous conspiracy theories. This leadership change heightened tensions, particularly among clan immigrants, and saw a rise in nationalistic organizations advocating a return to previous state structures. The Republic also confronted external threats, including aggression from the Capellan Confederation and former Free Worlds League states, strained relations with allies, and economic distress due to cheap Lyran imports. A bank collapse in Vega in October 3131 heightened political dissatisfaction with Redburn, despite Senate and Paladin backing. The HPG network, crucial for interstellar communication, catastrophically crashed on August 7, 3132, disrupting 77% of HPG stations in the Inner Sphere and sparking widespread chaos. Despite Comstar's attempts, the network wasn't restored. Adding to the chaos, around 40 HPG stations were attacked by unidentified forces, potentially linked to the Republic. Paladin Kelsen Sorensen introduced the Solar Express, a rudimentary relay system which established relative communication stability by 3134. Comstar acolyte Tucker Harwell found a potential HPG reactivation solution in 3135, but was kidnapped before widespread application. Despite occasional successes with Harwell's methods, humanity still lacked fully restored interstellar communication nearly 15 years post-collapse. After the HPG network's collapse, multiple splinter groups opposing the Republic surfaced, mainly comprising Banson's Raiders, Dragon's Fury, Spirit Cats, Steel Wolves, Stormhammers, and the Sword Sworn. The Republic confronted numerous threats, leaving its planets vulnerable amidst an HPG-induced economic crisis and factional violence. Internal divisions within the clans and external threats escalated, and the tumultuous year 3134 witnessed various crises, including the exposure of the betrayer of Liao, Steel Wolves, and Jade Falcon's invasions, escalating Capellan Confederation tensions and chaos under new leadership. In 3134, the Republic was besieged by threats, including the Confederation-led rebellions, a new thuggy cult, and invasions on arboreys and prefectures 10 and 8. These invasions were led by Clan Jade Falcon, Clan Sea Fox, the Marek Stewart Commonwealth, and the Draconis Combine, among others. 
At the same time, the Republic's defense included Campbell's Highlanders, Kelswa Steiners, Stormhammers, and the Steel Wolves. Paladin, Victor Steiner Davian's assassination unveiled a conspiracy, sparking further rebellions and the formation of the Senate Alliance. A third invasion by the Draconis combined, and Dragon's fury escalated the conflict, intensifying the Republic's internal instability. In 3135, the Republic faced political turmoil and held a gathering on Terra for the funeral of Paladin Steiner Davian. Young leaders like Yori Kurita, Alaric Wolf, and Julian Davian hoped to build relationships for peaceful resolutions, but conflicts escalated after the event. Prince Harrison Davian suffered an accident, leading his son Caleb to take control of the Federated Sons and adopt an aggressive stance towards the Republic. Comstar, facing bankruptcy due to the HPG blackout, found a potential solution in adept Tucker Harwell and secretly rebuilt the Com Guards, reminiscent of the word of Blake. Invasions by various factions and internal unrest forced the Republic's Exarch Levin to declare Prefecture 10 as Fortress Republic, isolating those worlds from external traffic. Post-Blackout, the Republic faced an internal conflict, while other Inner Sphere states and clans remained stable. The Fortress Republic's formation led to significant political shifts. Malvina Hazen's Jade Falcons rebelled against their leadership, supplanting Jaina Pride via progressive policies. Archon Melissa Steiner of Liren Commonwealth allied with Clan Wolf against the Free Worlds League, escalating tensions. The Wolves relocated, leaving critical civilians and attacked Republic Worlds to misdirect focus. The Spirit Cats seized Marek, aligning with Oriente Protectorate and becoming integral to the Free Worlds League's revival, while the Marek group stayed separate after Kev Ross's assassination. The Republic isolated by fortress walls, fell vulnerable to neighboring factions, leading to independent states forming in its prefectures. Damien Redburn led the Republic Remnant in attempts to reclaim territory. Still, they faced invasion from the Draconis Combine, which later aimed to invade the Federated Sons, aided by Wolf's Dragoons. The Combine's leadership changed from Theodore to Yori Kurita and Matsuhari Toranaga. Meanwhile, the Free Worlds League fragmented, with Orients becoming the leader. Oriente successfully took over Marek Stewart's worlds and Jessica Marek assumed the role of Captain General. Despite allegations against Andurian, they were cleared of causing a catastrophe. Persistent attacks from the Lyrans and Wolves threatened League unity, and the death of Thaddeus Marek further weakened the League. In 3140, a joint Lyran wolf coalition invaded the Free Worlds League, leading to an eventual ceasefire with Clan Wolf shifting its focus to the Commonwealth. The invasion resulted in the death of Melissa Steiner and a disputed claim to the Lyran throne by Archon Alaric Wolf. Amid infighting between the Falcons and Wolves, the Lyran Liberation Force reclaimed Hesperus. Concurrently, in the Draconi's reach, the Federated Sons mounted a counterattack against the Combine, despite suffering heavy losses, while Clan Novacat's rebellion ended in defeat. Meanwhile, in the Capellan March, Operation Celestial Reward commenced, leading to the capture and execution of Duchess Amanda Hassock by the Capellans. The Federated Sons and Lyran Commonwealth were under significant strain due to internal issues and external threats. Trillian Steiner's realm faced instability from mutinies and internal issues, while Malvina Hazen's rule over the Jade Falcons was threatened by her coma and consequent loss of allies. The Federated Sons had faced military losses in Robinson and New Sirtis, complicating their defense efforts. Meanwhile, the Capellan Confederation targeted Tikhonov. Julian Davion offered hope as the first prince, the Rasselhaeg Dominion expanded by annexing Lyran Worlds and the Free Worlds League recovered from past invasions. Lastly, the Republic remained resilient. Between 3132 and 3145, the Republic of the Sphere faced significant turmoil, culminating in its collapse, deaths of key figures, shifts in clan leadership, and Constar's disintegration. This turmoil provided an opportunity for various nations to assert their claims. The chaos heightened in 3146, with the Capellan Confederation's landmark occupation of New Surtees, the murder of the first Prince of the Federated Sons, and the Draconis Combine's planned attack on House Davian. 
the Lyran Commonwealth and Free Worlds League dealt with considerable threats. While two clans attempted to capture Terra, challenged only by the formidable Fortress Republic. After years of defending Republic worlds and the Lyran Commonwealth from rivals, exiled First Prince Julian Davian faced numerous challenges to regain control of the Federated Sons, his homeland. With Julian's reemergence following Caleb Davian's death in 3145, he secured factional support to overcome Fortress Republic's obstacles and navigate hostile territories. He attacked the Menkalinan system and New Canton, avoiding civilian damage to divert the Capellan Confederation. Julian enlisted Clan Seafox's Gamma Amog into his invasion forces and assigned Colonel Sortek to raid Nan King. Despite Lieutenant Briggs' capture and the disappearance of the majestic bounty, Julian remained resolute in his mission to reclaim the Federated Sons. Task Force Navarre's attempts to distract the CCAF via diversionary raids proved unsuccessful. Chancellor Dao Shen Liao responded with a misinformation campaign and assaults on Kamal, Monhegan, and finally, Kathil. Intelligence discovered Julian Davian had separated from Navarre and located the living Devlin Stone in the Fortress Republic. A second Liao invasion targeted Andro, Galitzin, and Li, necessitating AFFS reinforcements on Kathil. However, joint counterattacks on Tikhonov, Chesterton, New Aragon, and Halloran V, alongside Gamma Amag's actions against Pleone and Poznan, forestalled a Capellan offensive on Kathil. Concurrently, the 2nd McCarran's armored cavalry and 3rd Tikhonov guards managed theft and civil disorder as sea foxes engaged in trials of possession. The CCAF then transitioned to damage control, preparing for a potential RAF onslaught on the Republic border. For six years, the Free World's League grappled with the Regulan fiefs and the Duchy of Andurian, but a truce with Clan Wolf enabled them to concentrate on defense. Tensions heightened in 3145 when the Magistracy armed forces started raiding the League following a personal affront. The League, seizing an opportunity to attack the Lyran Commonwealth amidst their preoccupation with the Wolf Empire, encountered resistance from unexpected reinforcements, although no counterattack was launched. After Philip Hughes' death, the League faced a coordinated attack from Regulan, Magistracy, and Andurian forces. Even in isolation, the League's Warden General implemented unconventional strategies, finding some successes while Duke Humphreys pursued peace, leaving Jessica Merrick in solitude. In the past, Julian Davian and Exarch Devlin Stone agreed on a defense pact, enabling Stone's RAF forces to aid the Federated Sons against the DCMS. At the same time, Julian concentrated on the Capellan Confederation. Despite an imminent combine threat, Julian led Task Force Panoply on raids, causing fear of an RAF invasion and prompting Dao Shen to strengthen defenses at the Republic border. The Task Force damaged the first Canopian Lancers and Hessen Industrial Works, surviving a naval battle. Misleading intelligence was spread to divert focus from Cathil as Eric Sandoval prepared strikes against the CCAF. A truce was finally negotiated, causing the CCAF to anticipate a Republic invasion. The Lyran Commonwealth experienced a decline, beginning with the Clan Wolf Revolt in 3140 to 3141. This downfall, accelerated by 3146 due to a military coup, Arkensteiner's demise, invasions by Clan Wolf, property confiscation by Jade Falcon and Hell's Horses, and territorial threats from the Free World's League. Clan Jade Falcon took control of Cameron, while former leader Anastasia Kerensky became Sakan of Clan Wolf. The Commonwealth faced an attack by the Free Worlds League, leading to the separation of Buena Province and the weakening of the Archon's authority due to Loberg's annexation by Widmer's forces. Clan Jade Falcon's attack on Ark Royal faced fierce resistance from Clan Wolf in exile and the Kelhounds, who retreated to Donegal to evade the Jade Falcons. The Draconis combine, buoyed by morale from successful campaigns against the Federated Sons and First Prince Caleb Davian's death, seized the Fed Sons' perceived leaderlessness to launch an invasion under Gunjo Kandre Torinaga. The DCMS and Wolf's Dragoons overpowered New Avalon's defenses, while First Prince Julian Davian remained oblivious due to a network breakdown. The triumphant DCMS demanded the surrender of Three Sons' worlds and conducted psychological warfare 
capitalizing on tactical errors to defeat AFFS forces further. The aftermath involved the destruction of monuments and the murder of religious leaders on New Avalon. In 3147, the Inner Sphere witnessed a brief period of peace following multiple conquests, even as an economic downturn hit due to the declining value of the Sea Bill amid the HPG blackout. Notably, New Avalon came under the Draconis Combine but was left in ruins, and the Lyran Commonwealth lost significant territories and key military manufacturing centers to different factions. The Federated Sons also grappled with low national morale following territorial losses. Clan Seafox, however, skillfully exploited the financial crisis for gains. By year-end, warfare had once again engulfed the Inner Sphere. Due to strengthened control of the Draconis combined over the Intermediate Region and other concerns, the First Prince of the Federated Sons postponed efforts to reclaim New Avalon. Task Force Percival and Cerberus, which included new mercenaries and excluded rogue units such as Tiger Hunt, aimed to undermine enemy forces rather than conquer planets. They faced resistance, but successfully averted full-scale attacks, allowing the Federated Sons to preserve their power, evidenced by border strikes. The Draconis Combine, led by First Coordinator Shiro Kurita, enforced harsh measures to control seized worlds, leading to unrest and resource problems, but a resolution was hinted at. In 3147, Captain General Jessica Marek of the Free Worlds League, after her husband's murder, targeted the Duchy of Andurian, Regulan Fiefs, and the Magistracy of Canopus. However, she was convinced by her daughter to focus primarily on Andurian. She persevered despite setbacks from the Marian hegemony near Tamarind Abbey and a demoralizing Marian invasion of Gibraltar. With support from Clan Protectorate Worlds and a blockade by Clan Sea Fox, chaos ensued in the Regulan fiefs. A counterattack by Lester Cameron Jones failed. Divisions arose in Parliament due to support for the Marian invasion from Canopus and the Capellan Confederation, resulting in a compromise, punitive strikes on the Marian hegemony, and a trade embargo on the Capellan Confederation. In 3147, the Lyran Commonwealth faced criticism for its handling of the Buena Collective Rebellion, particularly Archon Trillian Steiner's decision to hold General Widmer accountable. The Inner Sphere grew anxious due to unusual silence from the Clan territories, exacerbated by Clan Hell's horses breaking their pact with Clan Jade Falcon and successfully deploying swarm tactics in Operation Noyan. Concurrently, the Tarian Concordat and Calderon Protectorate, separated since 3066, publicized their impending reunification through a marriage between Marshal Kafdoru and Sam Calderon, inciting a wave of nationalism and increased military enlistment. In 3148, the inner sphere was embroiled in tension. The Federated Sons wrestled for control over the Capellan March's partially liberated capital, while the Free Worlds League strived to focus on one adversary at a time. The Lyran Commonwealth attempted to reincorporate a rebel province. The Capellan Confederation braced for more losses after forfeiting a critical world, and the Draconis combined fended off severe raids without overextending its military. The clans also encountered disruptions. Significant events unfolded, such as the loss of a notable leader, a head of state nearing death, a nation asserting its dominance, and historical reconciliations with profound impacts. The Republic remained secluded behind its fortress wall, silently watching the rise and fall of the Inner Sphere empires. After the disastrous Grey Monday in January 3148, the Lyran Commonwealth faced numerous setbacks, including Warlord Diego Widmer's failure to protect the capital and mech factories following the loss of Valoiri. The upheaval sparked anti-government riots and the launch of Task Force Kingbreaker. Despite the support of Thunderstruck mercenaries, the Second Collective Guards could not repel the LCAF troops, leading to the capture of Fort Buena and Widmer's execution. A subsequent loss in Ark Royal led to LIC monitoring Jade Falcon troop movements. As Falcon forces threatened Donegal and Coventry, LCAF bided its time before striking. In February, Jade Falcon attacked Coventry, but General Steiner's arrival reversed their advances. Falcon forces were then defeated by Wolf in exile forces, who later withdrew quietly from the Commonwealth. The Free Worlds League contended with an economic embargo from Clan C. Fox, a Regulan fiefs rebellion, and conflict with the Marian hegemony. 
In response to these challenges, the League, under the leadership of Nicole Marek, who had assumed the position of Captain General after her mother, Jessica Marek, was assassinated, declared war on the Regulan fiefs, and initiated strikes against the Marian hegemony. Despite early invasion successes, operations were paused due to Andurian expansion. Avenging her mother's death, Nicole engaged Regulus, culminating in surrender negotiations with Lester Cameron Jones. In the end, Regulus capitulated, Sea Fox merchants profited, and Lester agreed to a provisional status in the League. In 3147, Julian Davion announced the liberation of New Surtees from Capellan resistance despite ongoing destabilization efforts. Amidst criticism and internal strife within the AFFS, Julian temporarily ceded operational command to Eric, but remained the nominal leader. Martial law and curfew enforcement followed Capellan incited conflicts and bombings. Eventually, a ceasefire saw the Capellan forces depart New Surtees. Despite opposition from some factions, Daoshen Liao prioritized the impending Republic Front, although no official ceasefire agreement existed. Dao Shen and Julian vigilantly observed the situation, worried about a potential invasion and delayed support. In 3148, Kanri Toronaga led the Draconis Combine's reconstruction following Operation Percival, grappling with minor raids due to thinly spread forces. Toronaga, denied additional troops by coordinator Yori Kurita, was given command over a new elite military unit, the Hikage. He used the Hikage in Task Force Tujigiri to strike the Federated Sun's base at Remigen. Despite demonstrating their skills and inflicting damage, they didn't destroy the base or capture Eric Sandoval, the Prince's champion. This stirred fear in the Federated Sons, leading Julian Davian to strategize a counter-offensive. In January 3149, unidentified forces had briefly occupied three planets in the Augustine Alliance before withdrawing while two Vega Protectorate planets declared independence, drawing additional unknown troops. It was revealed that these intrusions were part of Republic troops' invasions, signaling the fortress wall's collapse. Consequently, Devlin Stone deactivated the fortress Republic system and launched Operation Shofar to bolster the Republic's position. The Republic armed forces successfully counterattacked Clan Jade Falcon on Lyons and Menkent and removed the Wolf Assault Cluster on Castor with extra troops. Despite re-establishing contact with the Republic Remnant, communication with Exarch Redburn was unsuccessful. After Operation Shofar, the RAF braced for potential clan and Capellan Confederation attacks. Dioshin Liao, upon receiving reports of troop movements, RAF attacks, and planetary secessions, suspected the Fortress Republic's wall had fallen. He sent jump ships manned by retired CCAF soldiers to test the Republic border which successfully led him to plan an invasion, Operation Boyoying, targeting Terra. The first wave of the attack, aimed at four worlds, met with limited resistance, but suspicions of traps due to the minimal RAF presence. Despite unexpected attacks by the 13th Principes Guards, Daoshin succeeded in outreach. Elgin, Kapola, and Epsilon Eridani, he then halted the second wave to prepare cautiously for future operations. Devlin Stone selected Paladin Max Ergen, an accomplished knight errant, to head the RAF task force in Altair. He launched Operation Eruptio, beginning with a surprise strike on Diaron on March 5, 3149. Despite Warlord Okamoto's counter-efforts, Ergen's forces triumphed. RAF then targeted Quentin and Town, disrupting the Draconis' combined positions and inciting a rebellion against them. Addicts fell into chaos as riots left the 4th Dyeron regulars leaderless. The operation's first phase concluded with the capture of Ozawa, signaling the Republic's resurgence and the DCMS forces' disarray. The Dyeron military district, weakened by an RAF attack and the death of its warlord, was evaluated for a counter-offensive by Kanri Toronaga, though he lacked the necessary troops. A potential solution emerged when a Capellan Confederation ambassadorial team proposed a joint military alliance between the Draconis Combine and the Confederation to counter the Federated Sons. Despite initial skepticism and fear of Capellan ambitions, the Draconis Combine, shocked by the news of Devlin Stone's survival, agreed to the alliance after consulting with the DCMS High Command. The coalition, concentrating on intelligence sharing, arms deals, and joint military operations against the Republic of the Sphere, was cemented with a unity pact and an invasion plan named Tiamat, 
despite timing concerns. In 3149, the Republic's operations, Shofar and Eruptio, significantly influenced the Federated Sun's leadership. The AFFS aligned with RAF's movements, and the Republic advanced into the Draconis Combine. Despite losing a limb, Julian Davian recovered quickly due to Devlin Stone's support and underwent therapy with a prosthetic leg. After demonstrating his ability with a modified Malice Mech, he resolved to go to New Avalon to boost morale, despite concerns about the lack of RAF support. In April, Operation Percival saw key victories on O'Fallon, Coloma, and Augusta, and engaged retreating enemies on Seguino. In 3149, Damien Redburn's Republic Remnant, unresponsive to Republic outreach and lost a task force, became the target of the Wolf Empire's strategic assessments. After significant losses to the Wolf Guard Striker Cluster and the Ninth Wolf Assault Cluster and the self-destruction of their warship, the Flatus, the Remnant defenders regrouped on Callison. They met Paladin Janella Lakewood's task force, but Redburn accused the Republic of abandonment, resulting in most of the task force choosing imprisonment. A more significant Republic force, led by Jonah Levin returned, defeated Redburn, and incorporated the Remnant into the Republic armed forces under Levin's command. Countess Campbell and Paladin Zhu maintained control over their units. Canary Toranaga became concerned by the combined offensive of the Federated Sons and the Republic in the region around Coloma. In response, he devised Operation Tiamat to trap RAF troops and isolate the Sons from the Republic. The Draconis Combine initiated the operation before the Confederation, launching surprise attacks on four planets in the Terran Corridor, notably capturing Mallory's world, Ronel, and Deneb Kaitos. These victories helped them uphold the Unity Pact and regain their border with the Confederation, isolating the Sons from the Republic. Meanwhile, the Confederation advanced on the Republic, capturing New Rhodes and Bryant, among others. Despite a disruptive attack by Task Force Percival on Numenor and Paulding, the first phase of Tiamat successfully triggered the operation's next step, which faced mixed resistance on different planets but made substantial progress. Task Force Eruptio under Paladin Ergen, targeted strategic points on the Draconis Combine's border, dealing severe damage. Despite Kanri Toranaga's efforts to wear down and isolate the RAF regiments, the army groups remained tenacious. Uncertainty loomed about the task force's destination, but Robinson was reinforced upon discovering their plan to head to Lucerne. Task Force Eruptio arrived on October 18, the first army group creating a diversionary riot, while the second aimed to capture Buller, which they did after intense resistance, including capturing the warlord of New Samarkand. The first Fides quelled Damyo Ogata's subversive warfare, ending Kuraton resistance. Despite appeals for seppuku, Yori Kurita stayed silent, leaving Kyuzu in jail. The first army group, led by Ergen, left, while the second held the capital until AFFS reinforcements came. Dao Xin Liao seized Keed and smartly positioned CCAF regiments on the front lines while safeguarding the Confederation. He relocated to Liao with his advisors for quicker communication. Preparing for a terror assault, troops gathered at the border with backup forces held in reserve. Concerns emerged over potential strikes from the Republic, the Wolf Empire, and Jade Falcon Occupation Zone. Equipment malfunctions and sabotage impeded the invasion plans and a scouting unit sent to Terra was eliminated. Meanwhile, Warlord Tadashige from the Draconis Combine disregarded cautionary advice, capturing Asta and Altair, but encountered opposition on Fomalhaut. Despite limited resistance, a planned strike on Terra was stopped due to active defenses. Toranaga concentrated on restoring order in the Dragon's Tongue and Draconis March region after AFFS Task Force raids. The loss of Robinson impacted morale, leading to Toranaga's ultimatum to regain control. He deployed warlords of Dairon and Benjamin to the Rimwood districts, endorsing a long-term plan over retaking Robinson. Rising Federated Sun support led to riots and anti-Kurita demonstrations. Although the AFFFS regained several systems in the Draconis March, the border ultimately stabilized. Meanwhile, the Rassel Hug Dominion launched a successful raid on Shionoha and Daev following protests, but concerns about potential Republic invasions into the Vega Protectorate lingered. In 3149, 
the Republic Remnant was assaulted by the Wolf Empire, who covertly masked their real goals and unexpectedly attacked Sky, a Falcon stronghold, leading to an escalating feud. As the Wolves targeted New London, the Falcons defensively maneuvered against their onslaught, mistakenly worrying about a Laric Ward's location, but ultimately retreated. Galaxy Commander Helmer, initially a Falcon, was captured and collaborated with Clan Wolf. The Wolves quickly seized Sky and Zebi Bel Janubi and claimed victories on Callison and Marcus, including unexpected triumphs by a Laric Ward on Denebola and Castor. They continued conquering Republic worlds despite opposition from the RAF and Jade Falcons. Although Paladin Max Ergen briefly disrupted the Wolves' supplies, Anastasia Kerensky overcame him and the Wolves emerged victorious in subsequent battles. In 3149, the Free Worlds League experienced raids from the Marian hegemony that strained the Tamarind military district and limited Parliament's troop allocation due to other commitments. By 3150, the hegemony ceased their raids and invaded Campolione and Astrakazi, but eventually withdrew under resistance. They also attacked Thraxa, Gambion, and Marantha, though they only successfully held Marantha temporarily. The Magistracy of Canopus repelled the hegemony from their territories and initiated a campaign against them. Despite facing censure from Parliament, Fontaine Marek employed mercenaries and conducted an unsanctioned assault, seizing various worlds, including the heart of the Illyrian province, by year-end. Between 3148 and 3150, the Lyran Commonwealth faced significant authority challenges, including forming the Timbuktu Collective by merging the Rim Collection with five Timbuktu theater worlds. This led to secession and piracy problems. Stretched resources prevented the Lyran armed forces from reclaiming lost territories or defending against pirates. Margrave Gareth Dinison's reliance on militias failed to stem the rising piracy as the Timbuktu Collective expanded. The region was further destabilized by Clan Jade Falcon's planned offensive and the Free World's conflict with the Marian hegemony. Archontrillion reorganized her forces in anticipation of a Jade Falcon invasion that had not materialized by mid-October. The location and intentions of Malvina Hazen and her raptor Keshik were still unknown. A Laric ward of Clan Wolf advanced toward Terra, scoring victories on Gram IV and Pollux, and overcoming the Eleventh Principes in Alula Australis. Despite setbacks at the fortress wall, he pledged to prevail at his fleet's expense. Concurrently, Malvina Hazen led the Jade Falcons with harsh tactics on a destructive campaign toward Terra. Despite unanticipated Clan Wolf reinforcements, she remained steadfast, moving her forces to Rigil Kentaris to stage the final assault on Terra. Determined to stop Clan Wolf from becoming Ill Clan, she faced Devlin Stone as the last obstacle. Dao Shen Liao targeted the HPG station on North Wind, a part of Project Sunlight, for its strategic importance and unique self-correcting technology to protect his nation from the RAF and undermine Stone. Despite Stone's preoccupation with the clans and substantial progress made by the Capellans, resistance from North Wind's defenders, including the Grey Watch, resulted in a stalemate. The RAF reinforcements helped repel the Capellan forces until the arrival of the Draconi's combined troops, who disregarded alliances to secure the HPG for House Karita. However, a sabotage effort by the Grey Watch caused the HPG to explode. The conflict ended with the Combine Troops' withdrawal, a defeated Capellan force strained into faction relations, and the remaining potential for future HPG reconstruction underground. The threat from the Capellan Confederation had been temporarily neutralized, but Clan Jade Falcon and Clan Wolf remained significant risks. Internal struggles prevented House Davian, the ally of the Republic of the Sphere, from providing aid. The Clan's victory could only be claimed once they reached Terra, hindering their ascent to the Ill Clan status. The Fortress Republic was rapidly losing time. On January 1st, 3151, a fleet of clan ships appeared in Terra's space, bypassing the wall. This arrival marked a key challenge for the inner sphere and humanity's future. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this introduction to the Dark Age. While we are still in a blackout, let us know which Dark Age faction is your favorite in the comments below. We will see you next time, and remember, if you are part of the 40k fan community, 
We are here to rescue you. Please do not resist.